In this video, we will be painting ponderosa pine trees in the spring and summer. That means they'll be green and red mostly. Okay, the brushes I'm using today, this is a Langnickel number 44 Royal Sable. This is a Langnickel number 12 Royal Sable. The palette today, we'll be using titanium white, ultramarine blue, permanent red medium, this is transparent oxide red and this is cad lemon yellow. This is my medium which is basically a paint thinner. If you open up our medium video you can learn how to make this. Okay I usually start with transparent oxide red and we'll just lay in the lay of the land here. I like to cut in the trunks of the trees first. We'll make some different shapes and sizes of trees here. Some tall, some short, some larger than others. I usually tip my brush on its side and then tap down the middle of the tree. Ponderosa is unique in a way because the branches on the Ponderosa tend to lean down rather than angle up. They angle down typically because they get heavy and they start leaning down as they get older. That sort of makes a Ponderosa pine unique. Okay, then I'll take a little ultramarine blue, cad lemon yellow, and a little transparent oxide red, just to see where my contrast is. Now the black that I mix up is ultramarine blue and transparent oxide red. And this makes a really nice, dark, rich color. So I'll lay in my darks now. And then I mix up green for the branches. And the green consists of ultramarine blue, cad lemon yellow, and transparent oxide red. And it makes a real nice sage kind of green. I usually don't make my ponderosa pines real bright green. Remember these videos are designed as exercises that are just launching pad for you to go in whatever direction you want to with these colors. These are just examples that you can springboard from and design your own trees and your own color scheme. Try to improve on this existing idea. That's what creativity is all about. The right side of your brain wants to create something new. Okay, now I'll take some warm red and lay it in on top of the green again. Now we'll take some transparent oxide red and create some brush and grass bushes in front of these trees. When you're in the forest you'll see the, all these broken branches and broken grass and limbs and twigs all over the place and the forest really is broken up like this quite a bit. Okay now we'll cut in our trunks of our trees. Cut the trunks in about midway through the painting because you want some of the branches to overlap the trunks. We'll cut the trunks in and then we'll develop the branches on top of those. We'll actually come back later and cut more of the trunks in. Okay now I'll get a little more finite with my brush. I'll use my smaller brush. So we're just building up layers here. Building up layers of paint. Layers of line. Layers of color. Again, the right side of your brain is compelled to create something that wasn't there. So pulling all these elements together is the expertise of the right brain. And it's what the right side of your brain does best. I 
add a little more black to the lower parts of the trees. The reason the trees are darker at the bottom, shadow is being cast from all of the branches in the tree onto the ground and onto the bottom part of the tree, and that's why the lower parts of the tree will be darker. Let's put a different color of green on here just for some variety. Okay, now I'll take my paper towel and sort of flick some of the brush and grasses and tree limbs, drag them up. Okay, we'll take a little more green and just sort of work the branches here a little more. You can stop at any time you want to on this, and, or you can take it further than what we have it. Again, this is just an example of how to develop these trees. You can make them more green if you want, make them more red. In the fall, typically in the fall, they're much redder. Okay, we'll add a little more variety in here with a little more green and different shades of green, different shades of yellow. Now I'll put some more of my dark colors at the base of the trees and on the ground. Typically you lose some of those darker colors when you're laying in your layers of paint, so you have to come back and add them. Okay, now let's come back and repair our trunks again, and then we'll paint over those a bit. Add a few more hits of grass here. Add a few more little darks here and 